Sit right down and I'll show you where my dreams began. I'm Michael Dugan, your culinary host, guiding you through the chef's journey. Join me at the chef's table where you'll experience stories, secret sauces, signature dishes, and kitchen disasters. Welcome back to part two as we follow along Quinn's journey and explore Vietnamese culture and cuisine. Let's talk a little bit about your dishes. So can you tell me what dishes are the most popular right now among your customers? Wow, that's a loaded question. It is. Of a northern pho Tai Lang, which is a saute pho. Okay. Inspired by pho tin in Hanoi, which is a, well, for context, pho originated in Hanoi. And not in Hanoi itself. Uh, legends is that it originated from Nam Ditten, which is a town where my culinary director is from. He uh, created a recipe that is um, inspired by Pho Thin, which went viral and is like very popular right now in Hanoi, oh. where they do a saute steak and they eat it with onions, like a, like a heaping full ball of onions kind of idea. We, I tried it and I really liked it. I said, wow, this is actually one of the few Northern Pho that I really enjoy because Northern Pho tend to be very light, delicate, but also MSG heavy as opposed to bone broth heavy. Okay. Southern Pho tends to be very fatty. It has more what they call nuc bell on the top. Okay. Whereas Northern Pho, you won't see the fat condensing or coagulating on top of the broth. Interesting. So therefore, they eat it quickly. There's no bean sprout. There's no bean basil. There's not a lot of side veggies. Matter of fact, the side veggies is often pickled garlic, red chilies. And that's kind of what I've known since I've been to Hanoi. Pretty much every single pho in Seattle for the last 30 years sells a southern pho. Even if your restaurant is named Pho Bak, for example, which is one of the best restaurants in Seattle for the last 40 years, they sell southern pho. They don't sell northern pho. Okay. The name itself is North Pho, translated to North Pho. But they couldn't sell a northern pho because... The palate of everybody here is Southern. I got it. Okay. So when we started selling uh, Northern Pho two months ago, I've seen everybody just drink the whole bowl of soup. To be fair, we serve a small bowl. So if people like it, they would drink up everything. I mean, pretty much every bowl I've seen has pretty much gone empty wow. because people really enjoy the soup, enjoy something that's different. On top of that, we use a fresh pho noodle, which everybody has really not gravitated to yet or moved to yet because fresh pho noodles wasn't always available in Seattle. It's always like a dehydrated version that you rehydrate in boiling water, not fresh. So the texture, the chewiness, the consistency is very different than fresh pho. Okay. For example, pho box still uses a dehydrated pho. Vinasan, my flagship mm -hmm. brand, all five of my location, we still use dehydrated pho, right? It's just easier to do and it's a lot less expensive. Sure. We are going to move to fresh pho noodles in 2024, which is like right now. Wow. You know, people are going to be very surprised, be like, well, how come this doesn't look like anything? that I've had in a long time. Dong Thap Noodles in South Center introduced it like about three, four years back when they made it in-house. It's something that is trending. People understand that, hey, there's such a thing as a different type of pho noodles. It's flat. And then speaking of pho noodles, a lot of people, including like half of my community, don't realize that pho is not a soup, that pho is a rice pasta. Okay. It has nothing to do with the soup itself. The, the pho soup itself just happens to be the most popular uh, version of it, right? That's just like you eat in 10 different form of pasta. Some of it might be baked, like a lasagna, mm -hmm. and some of it might be saute, or some of it might be poached or steamed, whatever it might be. That leads me to my, probably this, one of my most popular dishes is a deep fry pho pillow. Oh, interesting. Which is a sheet of pho cut into ravioli size. Okay. And deep fry into a, a puffy ball, puffy square of pho noodles and topped with 
um, saute mustard green and steak and onions. Oh my gosh, I've never heard of that. That sounds amazing. It's eaten with the pineapple fish sauce. Wow. And papaya pickles. And I found that in a neighborhood called Kong Usa in Lake, Lake Chukbat, Hanoi. So Ho Chukbat is uh-huh. like on the southern tip of West Lake. And West Lake is one of the biggest lake in Hanoi. Okay. And on the southeast corner, which is where Renton is, Renton is in the southeast corner of Lake Washington. And in this neighborhood, they sell everything that is far except the soup. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You can have stir fry pho. You can have egg noodle, pho noodle deep fry with egg batter. You can have deep fry pho pillows, which is what I, my favorite thing. Mm. You can have steam pho rolls. Like they, the whole sheet just roll with steak and basil inside. That neighborhood, people congregate there just for that. That's kind of like the food scene in Vietnam is like if one person does something really well, yeah. there's like tens and millions of people in in Hanoi or in, in Saigon. So they will congregate to one street oh. to make sure that street become known for this street is fry pho. Okay. This street is pharmaceuticals. This street is, is by me. It becomes like a foal, a small neighborhood of one singular thing almost. Yeah. And there's enough population to kind of support that concept of, well, wow, why are we all opening right next door to each other and selling the same exact thing? Deep fried fur pillows is really hard to do. You won't find anybody doing it. Okay. I haven't found anybody in the United States that have done it. It just recently kind of migrated to Ho Chi Minh City or Saigon, but people don't do it. The concept of it, to do it, probably take years to master. Wow. And we only offer it for dinner. Uh, no, for, for lunch. Okay. Because lunch is slower and it allows us the time to do it. Our dinner crowd is too much. So we, don't, we do not offer for our pillows. I'm going to have to come in and try it. You really just captured my palate. I can't even tell you the way you described it. I'm like, yeah, I'm craving that. I got to try it. It's definitely one of our signature pho dishes. I uh, know our northern dishes. Mm-hmm. So we have a good five, six signature from the north, a good four or five signature from central Vietnam. Our executive chef is from central Vietnam. My culinary director who lives in Vietnam. That's amazing. He's from Nam Dinh, which is the origin of it. But he lives in Saigon now. Okay. And uh, he consult on all of the dishes because he just has an amazing palate. I love it. And then a lot of the sauces and recipe from the South is my mom's recipe. So we we try to represent all three regions. Okay. Even the restaurant is built out in three regions. And our restaurant is like 200 feet long that runs North and South. Yep. One of the so largest we were, restaurants we're to... in the U.S. Is that right? It is the largest Vietnamese restaurant on earth outside of Vietnam. Oh my gosh. From all of our research, maximum capacity of 441, 11,000 square feet okay. inside, outside. I didn't attempt for it to be that way. It just, it came naturally. Wow. So the only thing that we know of is Tan Sung, no, Kim Sung in Houston. They have three locations that are like buffet, banquet hall style uh-huh. that are like over 20,000 square feet. Their name is Vietnamese, but their food is anchored by Vietnamese, Chinese, and sometimes Japanese food. For me personally, when I made that statement, mm-hmm. I don't think if you sell Chinese food, then you can claim your restaurant as being a Vietnamese restaurant. Mm. Because you need another culture to kind of help fill the space, right? You have Chinese restaurants are abundant, but if you have to put Chinese food into a Vietnamese restaurant, I think that automatically in my mind just disqualifies uh, them as being a Vietnamese, exclusively Vietnamese restaurant. So two more quick food questions. What unusual dish should I order? From your menu for dinner are the sides um we have a villagers pork belly mm. which is basically bacon lemongrass and shrimp paste one of the most nostalgic thing uh you can eat for vietnamese food it resonates with north south and central vietnamese being that it just it goes like a teeny bit of it can feed a whole family if you eat it with white rice right our culture is very rice centric mm-hmm. you know like we sell vietnamese family dinner which is highly encouraged to be balanced with veggies, savory food, rice, and soup. Mm -hmm. It has to be a combination of everything. Sometimes I will have somebody sit there and eat a a clay pot, black cod dish that is very savory. Yes. Without rice, without anything, right? And I'm like, oh, no, that's not going to be balanced. Or somebody eating a sour soup by itself when it's meant to be shared with five different people. I see. The thing that I am most proud of 
we sell a thing called the forbidden eggplant, not fermented eggplant, pickle eggplant, sometimes lightly just tossed in a vinaigrette. Yes. Of lime juice, but dipped in a shrimp paste. I had it. It was delicious. I remember that. We have both the option of northern and southern shrimp paste. In our culture growing up in the United States, there's a negative stigma to it. It smells so bad. Our parents, our friends, everybody would be afraid to bring it to school. Uh, Like you wouldn't put that in your lunchbox. Sure. It is never in my life have I seen it served in a Vietnamese restaurant. Okay. But it's very tasty. Yes. It's full of, it's made out of shrimp, salt, and poly MSG. Yeah. Right. The the fact that we put it on the menu and we feature it proudly on our sauce bar is because we are unapologetically authentic. Yeah. Like we're not going to apologize for what we love. So we put it front and center. I mean, if you can't stand the smell, if you can't stand the flavor, then we are definitely not, it's definitely not something you should right. try. We are so inclusive is that because we know that the menu ranges opposite end of the spectrum is we have Wagyu beef skewer yeah. right? with North v- v- Vietnamese pepper. Wow. Pepper, something that, that almost everybody loves because who doesn't love Wagyu steak on a stick? Oh my gosh. We have sizzling steak and eggs. We have the, the short ribs, which is braised in fur spices mm-hmm. and finish off on the grill. Probably our number one seller. I had them. You said try this and I did. And oh my God, that was unbelievably good. That That is probably going to be our number one seller for a long, long time, along with yeah. the Pho Thai Lang. The, the only complaint I've ever had about that is it might be a little bit too fatty. In two months, we probably sold thousands of those short ribs already. We can't order it quickly enough. Wow. And that's like, and I almost refrain from encouraging that dish. Yeah. Because that's kind of like one of the very few dishes that is modern. Okay. It's my take on everyone putting short ribs in their pho. So it's like, well, if this pho is too big, how can we put it in a bowl? If this is, this short rib is too big to be put in a bowl, we instead of putting up the rib into the pho, we put the pho into the rib. So we cook it in a pho spice sauce. Okay. And we just infuse pho flavor into the short ribs. It was my culinary director's idea. Wow. It, it, I, I told him, look, everybody's selling short ribs. He's like, yeah, but I hate the way they do it. I love that. Sometimes it looks like a dog bone inside a bowl. Yeah. There's no love into it. He's like, I think I, I'm going to do something different. Yeah. When he presented it to me and I ate it, I started texting all my my, my, my team. I said, this is the best thing I've eaten in 40 years. Wow. I'm, I've kind of gotten almost sick of it because I've eaten it probably like oh my a hundred times in the last five, six months of r and in it. But it's so good. That's how many times I've eaten wow. it. Uh, it almost takes us away from our purpose, you know? Right. Our purpose introduced culture and soul into Vietnamese food. Oh, I love that. That is so amazing. Because you did. You really did. I mean, from my perspective and my wife's perspective, that keeps us coming back. We have so much. Yeah. I like to tell people, audience, anybody, it's like, look, I will always guarantee that if you try something you don't like, it's on the house. And it's like, well, we don't want to do that. We don't want to, we don't want to feel like we're robbing you or cheating you. It's like, no, you actually are helping me because if you like every single dish on the menu, which is going to be rare, but if you like 60, 70% of the menu, as opposed to just one dish that you always go to, you're going to come back to my restaurant many more yeah, times. Yeah. You come three times, but I want you to eat three different things every single time. And that is going to make you come back for me so much more. My business model. Yeah. I always want to guarantee the food. Right. And we have a Vietnamese brunch and lunch menu that is so inclusive of North, Central and South Vietnam. And then people come for dinner. It's like, well, I want to eat that breakfast dish. And I'm saying, do you go to the Metropolitan Grill and ask him if they had bacon and egg for dinner? Or could they do you like an egg omelet and French toast for dinner? Every culture has different aspects of a food. Yeah. And we want to introduce a brunch culture, a lunch culture, a street food culture, and a dinner culture. Right. And I have to culture my own community with that. It's like they come in and they're like, well, why don't you guys have Boomba Way? Or why don't you guys offer steak and eggs for dinner? I'm like, I am offering you family meal, which has not exist in Seattle for the last, since 1975, when the first Vietnamese mi- people migrated. Wow. No one has sold family food. And it's so unique, but they are so used to far, like they said, oh, 
even though I'm Vietnamese, I came here for pho only. This is Vietnamese family meal. Yeah. This is the stuff I want you to eat. This is the stuff that I want you to bring your mom and I want you to write home about. I want you to bring in your friends to introduce them to a completely different part of the culture that has never been highlighted. And I wanted to put it on the largest stage possible to understand what Vietnamese dinner looks like. And I want Vietnamese family to sit down and finally eat a family meal again. Part of a culture that's been forgotten because everybody sits at the table with an iPhone and an iPad. True. I feel like if the food is good enough, it will stop you from playing with your phone. It will stop you from taking pictures even. Yeah. yeah. I was so happy this morning when I saw a post on, on the foodie group. It just, it was all in words. It said, oh my goodness, my culinary experience at anchovies was mind boggling and I don't have any pictures to prove it. Oh, wow. You know, because I ate it all too fast. And I want to thank the creators of Seattle, the Seattle Foodies Group, because that's how I met you. That's how I found out that you were open. And that's how I thought, I got to have them come on the show. I got to have them share a story. They are by far my favorite group I've ever been a part of. It's They're incredible. They're extremely positive. They don't filter anything until it goes right. sideways. So when I post, it shows up for restaurant. They allow restaurant to post one times a month. And most restaurants don't even do that because they are afraid of spamming people, right? Right. So they, it's very respectful yep. in terms of uh, the restaurant community. They're good guys. Like when I try to post, I want it to be educational mm -hmm. because it's, it's such part of the community that they don't know what Vietnamese steak and eggs is like. Yeah. They don't know that we have pate in it because we was colonized by the French for 100 years. Okay. That we've been making Vietnamese pate for 200 years now. Wow. And it, it's like Vietnamese pate is going to be so different than French, right? They don't know that Vietnamese culture, we are, we have uh, a lot of head cheese, right? Yeah. Which is, if some people don't know, I head know. cheese yeah. is, it, it, it's like a ham mm -hmm. almost, right? A con a, a, like put together with fat and all of the best part of the pig yep. and make it into a meat cheese, right? It got nothing to do with dairy, but it's still called head cheese, right. right? But there's a big part of my community that has never seen head cheese before. Yeah. If I was to put it on the menu, that only their mom would appreciate it. So, you know, it's the amount of positive energy that has resonated out of the, the dining experience at the table. It's been amazing. Wow. It's That's why I'm at the table all the time because I needed them to see my perspective on why I did yeah. so that they don't draw their own conclusion. So it's been a blessing to have time and health just to be at the table side to kind of say hi to everyone. Yeah. I'm coming through the restaurant, right? Just imagine I'm walking, I, I park, I come down, I'm looking at the waterfront and I walk into this beautiful restaurant. I'm walking into your restaurant. What do I see? I built it. Receive $10 off your next purchase with Voices for Chefs 10. You don't know what to make for dinner again? You want to explore new cuisines, but you don't have time? What if you have new inspirations and we provide you with the ingredients and recipes? We know you want to travel, learn new foods, explore the world, but life's responsibilities keep getting in your way. What if you can bring those experiences to your home neatly packed into a box? Lady Boot Collective is a subscription service that finds real people from around the world to create beautifully curated assortments of recipes, ingredients, and cultural content. Not only do we include cultural ingredients, but also a set of detailed recipe cards with instructions on how to use them. Each box also has a QR code that when scanned takes you to tons more global exploration to immerse yourself in. Everything from film to lifestyle, art to history, it all can be found here. Live your life to the fullest. Subscribe now and don't miss out on the next cultural adventure. Lady Boot Collective. Always exploring. To represent family, I built it. To represent, more importantly, culture, I built it to represent Vietnam. Yep. Right? Geographically, culturally, family, food. When you walk into our door, it's probably the biggest door in, of any Vietnamese restaurant you will ever see. And it's yeah. handcrafted by me and myself and my own team out of teak, right? Teak is a hardwood found in Southeast Asia and found in Vietnam. Very prized. And it's going to hold up to the element. It's a, um, what do you call it? A pivot door. It's humongous, but it's people friendly. It's very easy to open. And immediately when you go in, the grandiose, size of it 
the waiting area is like 20 feet high with anchovies and salt on the left. Yeah. Because I wanted a background for people to remember that they just enter anchovies and salt. And on the right, we have beautiful woodwork with that represent the craftsmanship and the love that we put into this. And our hostesses are wearing traditional Vietnamese ao yai, which is the national dress of Vietnam. Yes. It's also symbolic made out of oyster shells and seashells on all of our ingrained into all of our tables. That's the first thing I want people to know that this is Vietnamese traditional. This is what we wear right in front of you. As you hit it, you're going to be stopped by this humongous four foot wide onyx jade. This jade is abundant in central Vietnam and it's like a, a gateway to your house. It brings energy into good energy into the, the restaurant. Growing up Buddhist, I want my space to be Zen, to, to be welcoming, to be warm. Yes. I have a huge shelf that display Vietnamese culture right behind it. I wanted it to be toned down because I wanted to that not to be the only story that was told. On your right hand side, you see this water dragon. So my son, his zodiac is and his element is the water dragon. Wow. Just like Greek mythology and every mythology, he anchors my infrastructure because we are on the lake. And just imagine we have 200 linear feet of waterfront with 100 seats outdoor. And my son and I, we share a super special bond. We have the same birthday. We have the same birthmark. And he's like an identical clone if cloning was a thing. I don't know how that is even possible. So I always like to think that I'm beyond blessed, right? Yeah. And I will always answer every question of how are you is because I have really nothing to complain about. Mm -hmm. So on the right of that, we have the whole main banquet room is anchored by him and it's the Saigon room. It anchors Southern Vietnam with beautiful architecture. Everything is handcrafted wood. It's a hundred percent cherry. Our office is going up the stairs. It's going to be the employee's office. It's some of the remnants that I kept from the previous infrastructure. So I kept it there and I built wooden screens around it, really make it look like it's it's Southern Vietnam. So when you go towards your left, you're going to see uh, a mural with the hand of God on it. The hand of God is a bridge in Bana Hills in Sun World in Vietnam. And it's, they call the official name is the Golden Bridge. Okay. Right? Like the Golden Gate Bridge, but it connects two to mountain side and it so it's very symbolic it's crazy to see that two hands coming out of the mountain holding up a bridge and the artist that i i commissioned is vietnamese artist and he immediately he saw it as a bridge of culture right just bridging the north and the south bridging seattle with vietnam like it's a cultural bridge so i call so the first thing he did was like he's like hey let me draw this on a napkin and he made it into an anchovy bridge. Oh my gosh. He's like, bro, you are using this tiny little fish to bridge a humongous gap in cultural understanding. Wow. Enlightening not only myself, but just the culture. Putting and highlighting Vietnamese fish sauce, anchovies paste on the map. Something so insignificant, yet it's the backbone of conversation. It's the, it's the bridge between now and then. So it's like, Man, it took this guy a minute to put together this message that I've been dreaming about for like 20 years. Oh, that is incredible. Yep. So I instantly, instantly said yes to it. And uh, so that's why you see this giant hands holding up anchovies. And I call it the Bana Kitchen because the town is called Bana Hills and it's in central Vietnam. And then when you look to your left, we have this beautiful uh, teal blue bar. Because it, it's a reflection of, of Da Nang, which is a beach town in Vietnam, in central Vietnam, which is like 30 minutes from Bana. You're just traveling through Vietnam now. All of our doors are bifolded. So they, it's like accordion doors that open. The whole restaurant will open up to the waterfront. And this bar is like a tiki bar that you can walk up to from the water. So when you walk through the bar and towards the north end, you will enter um, Hoi An. Hoi An is an ancient city right next to Da Nang. It's only 30 minutes away. It's one of my favorite city on earth and it's UNESCO protected. Hoi An is an ancient trading port for Vietnam, China, Japan, France. It's untouchable because the world has chosen to protect it. It is a UNESCO protected site. And I built it out to look exactly like the way Hoi An would look. 
in a private room with lanterns and color scheme, plant life. It's like, I want you to be tran transported into a whole tropical world that is Hoi An. Kind of. Wow. Yep. I have a painting there I bought 20 years ago for my dad. That Zodiac is, it's embroidered by some blind kids in a school and, and it's a tiger. Oh so gosh. the tiger represent my dad because he's like a, a, a librarian. He reads a lot. He's very educated, yet he's never taken any chances in life other than the fact that he brought us to the United States. That was his biggest accomplishment, right? Bringing us to the United States and just working his butt off in a factory day and night so that he can afford the bills. Wow. So he was able to bring my whole family, eventually all nine kids to come to the United States. And not once did he have a chance to spread his wing. So I have him just chilling uh, or just inside this library that is considered Hoi An. That's just my tribute to 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 his sacrifices. Wow. Going outside, I have two more pillars that is also drawn by those the, the artists. Like the foundation of my infrastructure is my youngest son, who is a ox. He's a golden ox. Yeah. My wife, who is the goat, they anchor infrastructure and they don't really get the limelight. My wife, she's not fancy. She doesn't show off about anything. I, I, I feel like they all are my foundation. Yeah. And then above the name is the Hui Lounge. So Hui is where my wife is from. My executive chef is from Hui. And Hui is the ancient capital city of Vietnam. Wow. So the, the actual palace, the we call it Dai Noi or the Imperial Palace. My wife lives like five minutes away. I made the whole room feel like it was Imperial Vietnam. From the woodwork to the craftsmanship, it needed to reflect what I understood about Vietnam uh, and about uh, the ancient times. And I, I don't have a deep history lessons of it, sure. but I did my best. So, so it's been very well received, probably everybody's favorite room beyond the Hoi An okay. room because it has the whole water view. It right. has 50 feet of water oh, wow. on that room. So going down the stairs, you're going to see like in front of you, a like a Buddha, a, a gigantic Buddha floating on a bridge that you normally won't see. And it's position behind the hand of God. And I have it very hidden. It's because I don't like to impose religion on anybody. Sure. I just want it to be extremely low key because my faith or my uh, family's faith, it's about Zen. It's about peace. It's about tranquility. It has nothing to do with essentially where all we want is like peace and the ability to be able to provide for ourselves and other people. That's kind of what my mom does all day. Now that she re retired, is she just take care of people in, in the form of some type of charity? That's what I look up to. That there is symbolic of my mom, right? And her devout faith to to to, uh, to Buddhism and her, the teaching that that she instilled in all of us is just like life is just full of karmic forces. So just go out into the world and do that's good. Beautiful. And that's all you can really ask. And don't ask for nothing in return. Just do it. And uh, that's kind of there's a saying in Vietnamese. It's called Lay đức thắng tài. Take karma. Take karma to defeat talent. That's kind of like an old ancient oh. saying in Vietnam that you know, karma will out will outdo all talent any day. And you know what? I was thinking about this as you were telling me the stories of your restaurants and the struggles in the beginning and the success that you've had. That is truly karma. There's no question in my mind that you have amazing karma. I could just feel it. As you're sharing these stories, I'm like, you're doing these amazing things. I got to say this. So if you are listening right now and you're in Seattle or the Seattle area, or you're coming to Seattle, you have to go see anchovies and salt. You have to experience this amazing restaurant and this amazing Vietnamese culture and food. Thank you so much. Yep. The last thing is just um, the north end of the restaurant is the dedicated into three rooms. They are like beautiful private rooms or public because we'll overflow the seating in there. And it's meant to represent Hanoi, Sapa, and Halong Bay. And it's just symbolic of the geography and the culture. I never thought in my wildest dream that northern food would be my favorite food on earth. Wow. Right, Being that I'm from the south, it's just mind-blowing. Finally visit Hanoi, coming back many times. And wow, this, like all of this has been kept from me all my life. People tell me not to go here, that the food sucks. Wow. And I'm like, wow, this thing is amazing. It's just, the weather is nice certain times of the year. 
you're in June and July, it's hot as hell. Yeah. It's just full of mountains and lake. So Hanoi is beautiful. Sapa, which I haven't even got a chance to go to yet, but the pictures are so mesmerizing that it's like mountains and mountains of rice. Like you, you say mountains of rice, you wouldn't think that rice grows on mountains, yeah. right? Man, my people carve the side of a mountain to grow rice. Wow. I, I don't know how that's like, I can't even phantom that as a child. Yeah. How is that even practical? How do you get water irrigation to go uphill? Or is there any source of water from the top to even be able to do this? And it's just mind boggling that can be a thing. Because I grew up in a rice paddy field in South Vietnam and it was always flat. Okay, Sapa is like really, really ingrained in my mind and I want to visit it very soon. And then Halong Bay, which is our biggest room in the north end, and it's also it has its own private entry, its waterfront. It has screens for you to do corporate dinners oh, wow. and family dinner, and it's beautiful. And I have my uncle just drew like a humongous eight by ten, eight by twelve painting of Halong oh, Bay. Oh my god! He's an artist. He's like eighty years old from France, and he built he drew this amazing artwork. Wow! Most people don't know that Halong Bay is like it's. Consider the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah. It's a natural wonder, like unlike anything that you've ever seen, that over 1,600 island in a bay. Oh my gosh. Beautiful and tranquil. And I believe that it's already a world heritage site. It's protected by the global community. It can't be touched. People are living on floating cities. Wow. And you just, I don't know. I went there for like one day and I feel like I need to be out there for like a whole year to be able to touch every corner of it. To see like, man, this thing is crazy. I'm adding it to my bucket list. I'm adding it to my bucket list. I I think if it's the eighth wonder of the world, it should be everybody's bucket list. I I went there and I was just canoeing around and I'm going into from one caves over to the next lagoon. It's like you're going from lagoon to lagoon by going under a rock. It's so hard to conceptualize with the mind. Every picture that I look online, it just doesn't do it justice because it's so far ranging that t- no one can take a picture of yeah. it, right? You you need a picture from an airplane when the, when the day and the clouds are absolutely clear for you to kind of see what 1,600 islands in a bay, you know? Oh my God. So I really want people to really walk the whole restaurant and it allows them to kind of be transported to Vietnam. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I just, my wife is an artist and she was blown away by the art and the the care that you put into the design. I mean, you can really see it. It's not a typical restaurant. It's a true experience. So how can our listeners connect with you? How do we find you online? How do we get to your restaurant? How do we experience anchovy and salt? Just check us out on Instagram or on, on, on our website. I'm always looking. The emails come directly to me. I'm simply one email or phone call away, even when I'm at the restaurant. At What's the, your email? Quinn at anchoviesandsalt.com. He's also going to have a guest page on our Voice for Chefs website. Quinn, I can't thank you enough for being a guest, for sharing your culture, your journey. You are truly a Voice for Chefs and a Voice for Vietnam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome back to part two as we follow along Quinn's journey and explore Vietnamese culture and cuisine. Thanks for joining us today. Follow us on Facebook. Find our website in the show notes. Subscribe on Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen. Leave a comment with five stars. And stay tuned for the next episode of Voice for Chefs. 